The Amiga CD32 is a wonderment for me in my collection and today I'm going to be introducing some games that I've been heaven- My dog sounded like an elephant then when she made a noise. Are you okay there Molly? The Amiga CD32 is my wonderment and today we're going to be taking a look at some games that I'm going to be playing next which means I haven't played these games. I've been researching a lot on the Amiga CD32 in order to expand my own knowledge and to get additional content out here on the channel because I love talking about this console. And if you're not familiar as to what the Amiga CD32 is, it is the CD form of, say, the Amiga 600 or the 1200 um, with just awesome games, really awesome games, much better sound quality in my opinion, but it definitely takes what's really good about the previous home computers and brings it all together into glorious CD format. So we're going to be diving into that today. Um, I also need your recommendations in the comment section below. I have and will be putting out more Amiga content, so if this is your thing, be sure to subscribe and enjoy the episode. <laughs> First up then is a game called Degeneration, which also had a 2015 release on the Nintendo Switch. So before we dive into this game, if you don't have an Amiga CD32, this might be something that you want to try as a HD remaster on your Nintendo Switch console. Degeneration was ported across to the CD32 in 93 and I find it very odd knowing that the game's plot is set in the current year of 2021, if only things were this futuristic. But anyway, this is an action adventure game with lots of different puzzles, i.e. you got to kind of shoot different targets to be able to unlock doors to get out of rooms to progress. I really like the isometric vibe and I do actually like the colour palette, albeit quite basic in terms of its graphics on the CD32. I will say I have checked it out on the Nintendo Switch and the HD version does hold up a hell of a lot better. So again, if you haven't got a CD32 and you want to try this, I would suggest going to take a look on the eShop and having a look at Degeneration on the Switch. Next up then is The Misadventures of Flink, which reminds me of Rayman in terms of its gameplay. Although Flink does have a much more duller colour palette, I think this looks like a stunning little side-scrolling platform adventure game that if you've got a CD32, you need to check out. Let's see what it's all about. What is it with isometric gameplay and maps? This being the start of Flink as we're dropped in at the start, weirdly enough. Now it's worth pointing out that this is out on the Sega CD, or Mega CD rather, and the Sega Mega Drive. And whilst the reviews are absolutely terrible, I've never played it and I think that it's worth definitely having a go. And if you, again, haven't got a CD32 or perhaps don't want to shell out the ridiculous prices for the games, it might be worth just having a look if you can get it cheaper on the Mega Drive. Let me know what you guys think of the misadventures of Flink. Now you remember Starwing, or rather Star Fox on the Super Nintendo, don't you? Of course you do, it was one of those classic games that really implemented the Super FX ship into not just the Super Nintendo, but the entire world and paved the way for games as we know them today. The next game that I'm going to be talking about on the 32 is the CD... Omega CD32's answer to Star Fox, and that game is called Guardian. Guardian released in 1993, and right here off the bat, you can tell the similarities between Starwing. It was later ported across to the 1200, so don't worry again. I'm giving you lots of information. Today, if you don't have a CD32, you might have a 1200 that you want to dive into some Guardian and play this gorgeous looking game. And whilst it is indeed a gorgeous looking game, it certainly doesn't live up to the graphical ability, let's say, of uh, Star Fox or Star Wing, but they just, the similarities are absolutely uncanny, right down to the enemies, the lasers, the ship shape, absolutely everything. And flipping back as the game loads in, you've got a choice between arcade mode and pilot mode, as well as this being a two player game. I haven't seen or done much research on the two player ability, but it's worth pointing out as I think it just adds to that awesomeness for Guardian. Oh, Doom. How I love you, Doom. 
how I fell in love with first person shooters when I first played Doom back on a PC in the 90s. As it launched, we were just standing Gordon Harwoods, barely reaching the countertop, trying to meander through the gauntlet of imps that became very famous for being known as Doom. That's why this next game is probably my most anticipated game to be getting next and playing on the CD32, and that is Alien Breed 3D. A classic from Team 17 with kick-ass artwork and music. Okay, you're probably thinking that this looks nowhere near as good as Doom, but I can't help but look at this game and feel this game and actually think how much it is inspired by Doom down to the enemies, the colour palette, the level design, you know, everything just oozes it. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the little border around the actual game itself, but I'm going to play it and I think I'm actually going to stream it over on my Twitch. Uh, so check it out if you want to follow me at twitch.tv forward slash thegebs24. I will stream some of this from original hardware very, very soon. And on that theme, the next game I do actually own, but I haven't played it. And for me, Alien Breed is such a resonant title within the Amiga franchise, not just on the CD32, but it's just a classic. So I've been thinking about it a lot. And that's why I'm including Alien Breed Tower Assault, which takes everything that works really well from the, pre the previous games and just bolsters it nicely with better graphics, better sounds, just seems a lot smoother. It's almost like, you know, you go from a, a reasonably messy looking cake that's say like Alien Breed in terms of its visuals and just something that looks so professional with Alien Breed Tower Assault. It looks gorgeous, it looks tasty, and I'm gonna be trying it very soon. Let's take a look. 1994 seems to be a very popular year for really kick-ass video games to be released and Alien Breed Tower Assault is one of those fantastic titles. What is it you may ask? Well it is a run and gun video game from the Alien Breed franchise. In fact it is the third game to be released and the Amiga CD32 really does help it shine. Now the gameplay is very much the same, it is a top down run and gun in which you have to tackle a hell of a lot of aliens and according to the glorious page of Wikipedia there are reportedly 276 possible ways of completing this game so in terms of replay value you're probably getting a fair deal for the money that you put in when you buy it. Now I'm easily pleased, one could argue, you may disagree that this should even be on my list for CD32 games, but I think that this game looks stunning. It's not meant to look 3D by any stretch of the imagination, of course, this is an Alien Breed 3D. This just feels phenomenal. I love the different shades of colour, i.e. we've got the red here, we have the green earlier, and it just feels absolutely crisp. The edging look really, really nice, like the edging of the graphics rather, it, the textures, everything for me works in Alien Breed Tower Assault and I can't recommend it enough. Now, I often get asked, Gemma, what is your favourite game of all time? And my answer is the same every time. It is Super Mario Kart on the Super Nintendo. That's why Bump and Burn, or Bump and Burn, really caught my attention when I was doing the research for this video. And it's probably really rem remnant more of Street Racer on the Super Nintendo. Street Racer was released on other consoles, but I played it most on the Super Nintendo. It is, I guess, a watered down version of Street Racer in terms of its color palette, draw distance, 3D ability, but it looks really fun and I think I really need to give it a go. And I wanna know from you guys if you've played it or you want to recommend a kart racer, now it's your turn in the comment section below because Bump and Burn is on my list for the CD32. So another game released in 1994 and you can choose from a selection of eclectic looking characters and ride in what is I believe to be a quite a linear racing game but linear it may be fun it certainly looks and I'm looking forward to diving into this one. It's one that I've never actually bothered to pay attention to until I started to research this video so I wanted to add it in because I was hoping that you guys could perhaps plug some gaps in whether or not this is a game that I should be getting on the 32 or perhaps avoiding completely. 
Now what's interesting to me are the critic reviews because according to MobyGames.com, Bump and Burn ranges from 85 out of 100 to 40 out of 100. So that's a pretty big gap. Now, as low as it goes, 40 out of 100, that was ranked by Amiga Computing, and the 85 out of 100 is CU Amiga. So critic reviews really do vary, but for me, I'm one of those kinds of girls that has to play a game in order to know if I like it or not. So Bump and Burn is on my list to play. Now, like many of you, I am a 16-bit RPG fan, the top-down, gorgeous RPGs, and even bleeding on over into the PS1 RPGs. I just recently purchased a Breath of Fire 3 on the PlayStation 1, and this game, for me, is probably the second most anticipated game on this list, because this game is The Separus Legacy. Sephiroth's Legacy is an action RPG that was inspired by The Legend of Zelda, Secret of Mana and The Secret of Monkey Island. Not just charming in terms of its sound, but for me, definitely charming in terms of its visuals. And again, plowing through my research, it doesn't seem to offer much by way of versatility in terms of areas, in terms of enemies, and in terms of its colour palette. In fact, this game had pretty mediocre reviews, but I really want to try it. I think I would really enjoy it, and I also see elements of Stardew Valley in just the pacing in terms of its slow, pacey, kind of grind almost. So not exactly released in the classic year of 1994, this came much later in 1996. For me, the developers Binary Emotions did a wonderful job at this. And I think we need to talk about it a little bit more because if you Google it, there's not a massive amount of information and the information that is there is rather scarce. So I'm singing some songs and I'm singing from the top of the castle for the Separus Legacy on the Amiga CD32. <laughs> that look i didn't even know it existed before i started doing my research for this video a couple of weeks ago it is an absolute must for the cd32 and i'm dairy i'm i dare say i'm gonna kind of hedge my own bets here i don't think a lot of people have even heard of this game because there's not a great deal of videos out there on youtube and i've never really seen many write-ups on blogs including my own um so i'm dying to play separus legacy it's one of the later releases on the CD32, releasing in 1996. It looks stunning. What do you guys think? The CD32 is a console I'm incredibly passionate about and I'm really excited to be able to also set up my Amiga 600 with the customised GoTech drive once I've sorted out the remainder of the Lady Loft and the Lady Lounge. But for now, the CD32 will be my primary Amiga console to go to. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you've learned a lot from it. I've certainly had fun researching it and I've learned a lot myself. So thanks for watching guys and I will see you in the next one.